Good morning, everyone. Good to see everyone here this morning. I have a few announcements I want to remind uh, everyone of before we before we begin. Some folks that we've been continuing to remember uh, in our prayers. Uh, good to have Larry and Hilda with us this morning. We do want to continue to remember uh, them. Um, and uh, there's, uh, you know, I guess. Just getting older doesn't help a lot with other things going on too. So anyway, um, glad that they're here. Dean and April are not here this morning. Dean uh, uh, had a very serious sinus infection. <coughs> Apparently it developed into bronchitis as well. And uh, they weren't here Wednesday night. So uh, and I know April's still working on uh, trying to get her medication things worked out. So uh, hopefully she'll get to where she's feeling better uh, as well. So we want to continue to remember uh, them in our prayers and continue to remember Holly and, and her family. Uh, and um, <clears throat> it, it takes a little while. Uh, we'll also remember Roy and uh, Roy's kind of up and down. He's, he didn't want to be here this morning. Uh, he's uh, not feeling as well as he usually does. So. But it does continue to remember uh, both Roy and Wanda and Miranda. Uh, Johnny's here this morning. He said he's feeling better. Uh, Angie's not with him this morning, but I uh, want to continue to remember them as well. Uh, Eric is scheduled to have uh, his hernia hernie, uh, surgery uh, the 27th. Is that still on? Good. <laughs> Keep moving it around and maybe maybe we'll get it. Yeah. And Mike's going to go over and... and uh, Help him out. Is that in Birmingham? Is that where you go? No, they will do it in Dothan. In Do that's right, Dothan. Yeah. Yeah. Don't 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 head to Birmingham first. That makes a really long trip. <laughs> uh, so uh, we want to pray for Eric and, and Mike too as he's uh, helping them out. Also uh, uh, mentioned, I think Wednesday night that uh, Malachi is having some trouble with his kidneys and uh, trying to been hurting him for a while, so I want to remember Malachi as well. And there are some others that are mentioned in our bulletin that uh, take a look at the bulletin and see some other information there, that uh, some reminders that might be <coughs> helpful to you as well. <coughs> as always, we want to r remind ourselves to, to pray for our leaders and, uh, in our country uh, and for other countries as well. And, uh, as we mentioned before, there's just a lot going on all around us uh, that we need to remember to pray for our leaders, pray for one another as well. Uh, pray for those that we remember in uh, uh, Afghanistan as well as in Ukraine, India, uh, other places around the world where we know of that our brethren are, are suffering. And uh, I always pray for the Lord for their deliverance, whatever, whatever way he sees best for that, that he delivered them. Sometimes that's just taking them home. Uh, and sometimes it may be that there's uh, other opportunities that they can help others. So I pray for our brethren throughout the world. Uh, we want to remember to pray for those that, uh, that we have a personal involvement with around the world uh, in Kenya, in Costa Rica, in India, as we mentioned before. And uh, we want to remember um, it's, a, it's a daily challenge uh, in other parts of the world and, and even here uh, with all the things that are going on. So, uh, again, let's, let's pray for all of these uh, that we're mindful of. And uh, we, we can, that's a, a great blessing that we have that we can pray at any time. A reminder, uh, too, I mentioned this last week in, in Harmony Grove today at 2 o'clock. They're having a singing. We've been invited. And uh, so if you can, I would like to to uh, attend that. It's 2 o'clock this afternoon uh, at Harmony Grove over in Commerce. Also, a reminder for everyone of opportunities that we have to assemble here um, each uh, Sunday morning at, at 9 o'clock for our Bible study and uh, for uh, 10 o'clock as we're here for our worship tonight. We'll meet at 5 o'clock. And, uh, and then uh, Wednesday night at uh, 7 o'clock 
and we have uh, Bible classes for, for everyone too. And, uh, hope that uh, you'll be able to take advantage of all these opportunities, not only for fellowship. You know, we we're a group that really enjoy getting together. Uh, it's a great time to be together, but uh, especially as we have opportunity to spend time in God's Word, and that we can encourage one another, and that we can uh, be edified ourselves. Uh, it's a uh, it's always good when the family can get together, regardless of the occasion. So, hope that you'll uh, can be here with us <coughs> each time that we have uh, to be able to study together. Our first song this morning will be uh, number two hundred eighty-nine. I love thy kingdom, Lord. In, in uh, Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus. He reminded them, and this is a reminder for each of us as well, you are no longer strangers and aliens. You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And also in uh, Paul's letter to uh, Timothy, he said, I hope to come to you soon, but, if I'm, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. The church is important, and each of us are part of that. And uh, even though separately we're part of the church, uh, it is meaningful for us to commit ourselves physically to being part of the church as we assemble. And so a reminder for all of us that there is a purpose. We've been called out of the world. And uh, it's, it's important for us then to act like we have been. And uh, assembling here is a great way to demonstrate that. <clears throat> Who support the elders 
and deacons and for the excess of this. We've been commanded to do to take a portion of what we have heartfelt to give back to the work here that we together can do the Lord's will. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, everything that you've given us, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son Jesus, for the gift of the Word. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to bless us and lead us and guide us, that we use this for the true work. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Next song is number 963, 963, more precious than silver. In Proverbs, Solomon reported a lot of great wisdom uh, literature for us. He said, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from, from her is better than gain from silver and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. In Paul's writing to the Corinthians, he tells us that Christ is the wisdom from God. He said, because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. And as a result, then, we, uh, the words of this song uh, refer to Jesus as wisdom, and as Paul, as uh, Solomon referred to, to wisdom as being better than silver and gold and more precious than jewels. And therefore, in having this wisdom in God, uh, he to us is more precious than these things. We'll sing the words of this song through twice, and then following this, Mike is going to lead us in prayer. <laughs>
Forgive all our sins. Heaven and we pray. Amen. Before we take the Lord's Supper together, we'll sing number 784, 784, Why Did My Savior Come to Earth? Jesus, when he was in the garden, he told his uh, he told the apostles that were with him, he said, he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. John, in uh, his gospel, um, in recording the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus, Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And that gift is made of all, available to all of mankind. Uh, it's up to us then to accept that free gift. As we meet each first day of the week, we remember the fact that Jesus did live in the flesh and that he gave his blood, his life for us. And we remember that sacrifice and all that he and our Father have done to provide for us uh, that gift of eternal life that we might be saved. So as we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, let us honor him as now our king.
beaten on the cross. So as we partake of this cup this, or this bread this morning, um, we need to remember the sacrifice. We need to remember the life that Jesus lived. Um, we need to remember him uh, hanging on the cross, the, 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 the fogging that he took, um, and the pain that he suffered. Um, but we also need to remember him uh, in the garden the night before, uh, that he had he prayed uh, fervently that the Lord take this cup from him because he knew how much he was going to suffer, but yet he did it anyway because of the song we just sang, because he loved us anyway. And he also says as we take this cup, that we do so again in remembrance of that sacrifice, in remembrance that this blood represents the new covenant. It's because of this, this cup that we have the remissions of our sins. There's no other way that we can have our sins washed away except because of the sacrifice. Paul went on further to tell, uh, to tell the church that they need to examine themselves. Not only should we partake of this <coughs> in remembrance of that sacrifice, but also that, that we set the troubles and the cares of the world aside. We've all got things going on in our lives right now. We've all are, um, have things that we worry about, things that we're stressing over, um, loved ones that we've lost. So there, there could be a number of things that, we, that we're that um, we dealing with in our lives every day. But as we come together this morning, at this time, we're to remember that sacrifice and to devote ourselves and to worship and honoring and praising God for that sacrifice. Say what you can think of today. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this bread which represents the broken body of Christ as we join our hearts and minds this morning remembering that sacrifice we give you great thanks in Jesus most holy name we pray Amen. Amen. sacrifice that he gave on behalf of, of us, Father. Lord, as we partake of this cup this morning, I pray that you would be with each one of us, that we partake of this in a manner that is well-pleasing to you, that we do so in truth and in spirit and in remembrance of that son, of your son and that sacrifice, Father. Be with each one of us this morning again, Lord, that, that, uh, that you just help each one of us to concentrate and to, to continue to devote ourselves to, to your son and the sacrifice that he made. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Next song will be number 115. 115, crown him with many crowns. The words of this song remind us of the fact that uh, Jesus was victorious over the grave. He is now the lamb upon the throne and he's ruling uh, at the right hand of God. In 1 Peter chapter 3, we're reminded of these facts that Jesus also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which, now cor which corresponds to this, now saves you not as a removal of the dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Truly a magnificent reward and a, over uh, having demonstrated a victory uh, in destroying the works of Satan. <clears throat> and so we honor our Savior uh, for all that he has done. Uh, if it's convenient for you, would you stand with me while we sing? <coughs> Good morning. Uh, before uh, we begin, I, I'm just going to share a uh, proud dad moment. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, Lord willing, in, in a little while, uh, uh, Jeremy is going to be preaching. Uh, he's got a couple weeks left at uh, the church in Mesquite, and uh, they asked him to, to preach this morning's lesson. Uh, so um, we've, we've had a few conversations this week and uh, gone over everything, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to uh, uh, to watch him uh, hopefully later on this afternoon and um, be able to, to share that with, uh, I guess, some time with me and Missy uh, to hopefully be able to, to watch him. So uh, I'm nervous for him. 
but uh, I know he, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, he's gone over it a few times, so I'm excited for him as well. So we are going to talk about uh, the ark and the church, but uh, before we jump into that, I guess the reason that we're, we're doing that is looking at the, the types and anti-types uh, that we, we see in the Bible, and, and when we look at that, that's, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, comparisons in the scriptures. And I found this picture, you know, when we're talking about uh, types and anti-types, and, and usually we, uh, we describe it, you know, it's like uh, uh, metaphors or similes or something, you know, something where we're comparing something. Uh, a lot of times this, though, is uh, it's comparing things that just really aren't connected at all, uh, but then it's, uh, you know, made the connection. So we look at uh, this example that we have here. The, the print of the palm is the, is the type. And then the hand that produced uh, the print is the anti-type. And so you look at a, a fingerprint or a handprint or something like that, it is totally different than a hand. But uh, when we're comparing, you know, this, uh, again, the, this, uh, you know, this print that's left behind, we can compare that to the hand that actually made that. And so there's a lot of comparisons to uh, Jesus that we see in the Old Testament. Uh, or, you know, we're going to look at the church today. And there's, there's other things that we can look at to say, all right, this is, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, when we look at this description of what this is, you know, it's uh, a shadow, I guess, of, of what's to come. And so we're able to look into the New Testament and uh, we see the, the real thing that we're looking at. And so, uh, again, uh, comparing two different things and sometimes two distant things. And you know, we look at uh, something like uh, the brass serpent. Uh, of course, the, the children of Israel were, were complaining and uh, uh, not happy with their travel arrangements, maybe uh, not happy with their travel agent. And uh, God uh, was a little upset with them. And so uh, he sent in the, uh, the fiery serpents and uh, killed a lot of them. And so uh, they asked for relief from God. He said, can you get rid of these things, please? And, uh, well, he, he didn't. But he did give them a, a relief from dying, which, which is nice. Uh, he asked uh, Moses to be able to you know, create this uh, serpent, uh, put it on a pole, and set it up. So if somebody gets bit by one of these snakes, then all they have to do is look at it, and, and they'll be healed. And so uh, we look at then uh, moving on to the New Testament, and we look in uh, uh, John chapter 3, verse 14. Uh, Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. It would be awesome if we could pray, God removes sin from the entire world, and he just uh, rip it away. That's coming. Uh, it's just going to be in heaven. But here, uh, sin is still around, and sin can still cause us to, to lose our life eternally. But he did give us something that we can go to so that we can have uh, relief from that sin, and again, be freed from that sin, and that's him. And he said, you know, just like Moses lifted that serpent up on the pole there, uh, and, and, and people were able to be saved, I am going to do the same thing. As I'm lifted up, that's going to be able to help others have eternal life. Uh, John 12, verse 32, again, he says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And he said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. Again, he was lifted up on that cross. And so uh, you know, we have a, a, a song in the songbook, and you know that's uh, part of the lines. And I, when I am lifted up uh, from the earth, uh, will draw all people to myself. And you know, then it's uh, lift the Savior up. And, well, it's uh, using it the way he's using it. We're singing a song saying, crucify him, crucify him, uh, since that's exactly what he was talking about. So I, I don't normally sing that one because he was uh, crucified uh, already. I think we, we don't need to lift him back up. And he has already been lifted up, and we have access to, to freedom from sin because of that. Another one, again, this uh, comparison between something from the Old Testament into the New Testament is when we look at uh, the Passover lamb. Uh, when the uh, children of Israel were, were escaping Egypt, of course their uh, instructions, they've, they've uh, you know, been able to be uh, witness to uh, nine plagues, and the tenth plague was coming, which was the, uh, uh, you know, the, the final one that was going to uh, break them out of Egypt, thanks to God. And so they had some instructions to follow. It's, you know, get ready, pack up. It's, it's time to go. 
but before you go, uh, you know, let's uh, eat at dinner. And uh, what I want you to do is, is, is kill a lamb. And of course, then uh, put the blood over the door uh, so that uh, uh, God would pass over that house and not, uh, they wouldn't suffer the, the consequences of the tenth plague, which means the death of the firstborn. And then they would eat uh, the lamb along with the, uh, the other food that was prepared in, in the Passover. And so um, Jesus, again, we see in the New Testament compared to our Passover lamb, again, his sacrifice, uh, his blood that was shed allows us to have freedom from sin. And then uh, as we just did, uh, we uh, remember his death on the cross and uh, we eat uh, the, the, the bread to remember his body. We drink the fruit of the vine to remember the blood that was shed. And so uh, 1 Corinthians 5, uh, verse number 6 says, Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Again, Paul calling Jesus our Passover lamb, the one that, that helps us uh, to be able to, uh, to be pleasing to God and to be able to, uh, uh, to remember the sacrifice that he made. Another type and any type, uh, we look at the tabernacle. Of course, all of these are lessons in themselves. We're just kind of glossing over them. But uh, looking at the tabernacle and just looking at the furniture that's in there, uh, to be able to get into the, uh, the actual tabernacle, you have the altar of burnt offerings. And you compare that to uh, today, of course, that's we, we sacrifice our old life I was in Romans chapter six, and uh, you know we we you know we uh, uh, you know crucify it, or we can uh, burn it on the altar of burnt offering. Then the bronze laid with this bowl where they would wash before they would go into the holy place. The the priests would go in there, uh, so they you know wash before we get in the holy place. Uh, of course, being compared to the church where the priests are, and we are uh, considered God's priest today. And inside there, we see the uh, the table of showbread. Uh, similar to the uh, the Lord's Supper, the golden lampstand uh, that we are, uh, the lampstand we are the, the ones that hold up the light, uh, as we see in, in the Book of Revelation, and then uh, altar of incense uh, compared to the prayer uh, that is offered up. As, you know, we as Christians are able to to talk to God, and our, our prayers go up as a, you know a sweet aroma to God, which of course uh, uh, we see uh, the most holy place where only the high priest was able to go. And, of course, Jesus being our high priest today, that's exactly where he is in the most holy place. He's in heaven. And so, again, we get all of these descriptions of God placing these things out there. And to, to be able to, there, there's a connection between all of these things and where he was going as we read through. It's not just uh, cool stories that we get to read and wonder what furniture looks like. It's, uh, there, there's a connection there that we can learn as we uh, study these things. Again, Hebrews 10 in verse 1, for since the law has but a shadow of good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year make perfect those who draw near. And so we're able to see that, you know, the high priest in the Old Testament had to go in every single year. First sacrifice for himself, then he sacrificed for the people. And, of course, Jesus uh, making that one-time sacrifice, not for himself, but for us. And we don't have to have him sacrifice over and over and over again. And then finally, we have uh, Noah's Ark in the church. And, uh, well, I thought uh, that would be a, uh, a good one to stop on since, well, that's the, uh, you know, the title of the lesson. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and uh, not gloss over that as much. But I want to look at, uh, again, it's, it's Noah's Ark in, in the church. What, and that's the, uh, again, the, the type being uh, the ark and the anti-type. And what we're really talking about is the church. And so uh, it's uh, basically, the, you know, the ark was a, a foreshadowing of the church, a foreshadowing of, of us. And so just looking at a few things that uh, is laid out for us in the scripture so we can kind of compare, uh, let, let, you know, we'll put the ark here and the church here and kind of compare and see how they are, how they're similar. And so we'll start off with the ark was built by a, a divine pattern. Uh, Noah had instructions on how to build the ark. Uh, Genesis 6, verse 14, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. So it's, you know, hey, make this really big box. 
and because that's you know we look at uh, the Ark of the Covenant. That, that was a box to hold things in the tabernacle. <coughs> Before that, you had the uh, the Ark that Noah built, which was a really big box, a really really big box that he built uh, to be able to hold a bunch of animals in, and you know some people that uh, came along for the ride. And so, uh, again, here are some instructions. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The, the length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, uh, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above. And set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. And so, here's your instructions. Here's what, again, it's not just, uh, you know, build yourself a boat. Because, uh, you know, probably, you know, it, it needed some good instructions since, uh, you know, there wasn't any rain, uh, you know, it's not, not the, the water there that he was uh, going up and down uh, on the, you know, it's not like he had a riverboat to look at or anything like that. So God gave him some instructions. This is what I need you to do. And so we look at, uh, you know, well, he's got some instructions here. And, I, you know, I've used the example before. What if uh, gopher wood was really expensive and, you know, the pine was on sale that, that week and he could have got a really good deal on it? Would that have been okay? If he would have decided that, listen, I'm afraid of heights. I really don't want to get up as high as a third deck on this thing. What if I make, uh, you know, a, a lower and a top deck and we just make them a little bit bigger uh, so that we can get some of the bigger animals in, in both levels? There's all kind of ways that uh, he could have, uh, we'll put in uh, the quotes here, you know, improved God's design and, and, and made it his own. But thankfully he did exactly as God instructed him to do. And hey, he lived. And that's why we're here. <laughs> all right, so uh, we look at the, then comparing that to the church. The church has a divine pattern. Well, we look at it. We're given our instructions. Here's what we are to do uh, as the church. Again, it's not to uh, uh, create this group of people to be a social club. There's things that we need to be doing. Uh, Ephesians 3 and, and verse 20. Now to him who's able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Again, it, it's, there's uh, things that uh, there's work. There are things that we are supposed to be doing. We are given instructions to, to go out and, and be uh, an, an active group. Uh, yes, uh, gather and worship. But uh, then there's, there's more. Uh, so we have a particular mission that he has uh, set for us to do. And we are using uh, God's power uh, at work within us. And so, uh, you know, and again, this mission goes on from generation to generation. It's not, uh, you know, we preach the uh, gospel to the whole world, uh, so we're, we're done now. We can sit back. Uh, there's still people out there that, that need to hear the gospel. Uh, Philippians 1, and verse 1, we see the uh, organization that, uh, that was designed for it, again, uh, Jesus being the head of the church. But Paul was writing the, to the church in, in Philippi. He said, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the overseers and the deacons. So we have uh, the overseers, the the elders, the, the shepherds, those that are over the congregation, and, and then the deacons. Uh, and so again, there's lots of different levels and names and titles and uh, jobs that uh, we can look at. Uh, you know, if we Google uh, church organization, uh, there's there's lots of different versions of it. Uh, again, going to the divine pattern, uh, going to the Bible, it's it's very uh, very streamlined. Uh, there again, there's there's Jesus, and then there's uh, the with the local congregation. It's the shepherds uh, that are that are leading the congregation. Uh, deacons called out to do specific works, and then well, there, there's us. Uh, you know, we and out of us, you know, we, we, we bring uh, teachers and, and those that are, are doing the work. So it's not a uh, we don't really need an orb chart uh, to be able to understand all the uh, multifaceted layers. It's uh, uh, again. It's God's design. And again, when we look at uh, our mission and, and our work, and I've used this uh, example of a bee because, well, that was, uh, uh, you know, poured into my head as a, as a child. Uh, thank you, Mom. But we look at uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 12 again. For the, for the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, 
and is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. It's, uh, you know, we understand God's blessed us so much in this life, and we don't need to hold on to it. And so, you know, Paul talking to the church there in Corinth, and and, and there's this, uh, again, that it's supplying the needs of the saints, but then in for all others. And you look at, uh, at Jesus and, you know, the, the perfect example, and he, he came to seek and save the lost. And he came first, of course, uh, to, the, to the children of Israel. But there were also Gentiles that he helped along the way. Uh, again, and we look at, John, you know, we read this morning, uh, John three sixteen. Again, God loved uh, the whole world. That's, that's why he sent Jesus here in the first place. And so do we show that uh, by our helping others that are in need of help? And again, part of that help is uh, uh, spiritual, but in this particular case, it's, it's the physical. Uh, Jesus, you know, he had a really, really important thing to do. He had important things to say, but he recognized that, that people need things from time to time. Something as simple as food. And he would stop what he was doing to be able to feed those who had a need. And so are we doing the same thing? Are we fulfilling this pattern by by helping those that are in need. Uh, of course, uh, again, preaching the, the gospel and, and spreading the good news that we have. First Timothy three fourteen. I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things uh, to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. And there, there is, we're the source. Again, you know, not us individually, not whatever floats around in our head, but uh, we should be able to hold up the truth, kind of like we talked about the, uh, the lampstands in the, uh, in the tabernacle and you know, we see in the, in the first part of the book of Revelation. Uh, the the lampstand, that's where they put the, you know, the, the light to be able to shine out. And here, you know, Paul talking about, again, this is the, uh, uh, the church is the pillar and buttress of the truth. We are the one that, that's holding up the truth so that everybody can see, you know, this is the way because there are many, many different sources that are out there who have come up with their own way, or who, uh, you know, basically that's come up with any way that you like. As long as you're happy and doing what you, what you want, then you're fine. We need to be holding up the truth so that people know exactly what they need to do to be able to follow the divine pattern that God has set out for us. And then finally we see uh, edification, Romans 14, verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy and the Holy Spirit. Whoever that serves Christ is acceptable to God and, and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Again, the it, kingdom of God, is, uh, that's, that's us. I mean, the church is not a matter of eating and drinking. The church you know, is, is not a social event, social club, uh, just uh, you know, so you've got somebody to eat with and, and hang out with. There's uh, more to do than that. Part of that, again, and we see that in Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, uh, when we come together, it's to encourage each other and uh, you know, provoke one another, uh, but in a good way. And again, this uh, pursue, uh, chase after, make sure we're, we're going for things that make for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Let's encourage each other. Uh, because you know, we all want to make it into heaven, and let's encourage each other to be able to, to make sure that we get there. If we look at the, uh, the ark, the ark had uh, a door, had, had one door. And so we see in uh, verse number 16 of Genesis 6, uh, make a roof of the ark and finish it to a cubit above. Set the door of the ark in its side, make it with lower, second, third deck. So again, that set the door. So it's, uh, uh, there, there's one, one way in uh, to the ark, and, of course, we know there is one way into the church, and that's, uh, that's through Jesus. In John 10, verse 7, uh, so Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who, come, uh, who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. So there is one way uh, to be able to enter in. And, again, there's... According to the world, there are 
many paths, there are many doors. Uh, if you want to come in a window, uh, if you want to dig under and, and tunnel in, uh, whichever way you want to be able to get in, you just go right ahead. And uh, then we look at the truth. And Jesus said, there, there's one way, and that, that's through me. It sounds so narrow-minded. Oh, can, can you believe that he would say something like, there's only one way to be able to do what God wants us to do? Well, uh, he was only speaking the truth. And so, again, that's uh, something for us to be able to, uh, to remember that through all these different pathways, there, there is one that will lead us the correct way. And I... And I, I meant to mention this before. I, I know, you know we're talking about uh, Noah's Ark. We, we know that story. We're talking about uh, the church, and we know us, right? I'm hoping that uh, as we are putting these things together, this gives us one more tool as we are talking to others about uh, the church and about this way to get in and to be able to, here's, here's an example uh, when we talk about you know, somebody that believes in all these uh, multiple ways. Uh, you know, again, there's uh, these uh, community churches that just come on in and worship God however you want, and and everybody will be fine. Well, again, maybe take them back to the ark. Said, so what happens if somebody decides to to you know build an ark out of oak? They they can make it all the right dimensions and drag a bunch of animals in and you know shut a door and are they going to be okay? Yeah, most of the time, uh, people will agree. Well, you know, God gave specific instructions that uh, Noah had to do exactly what He said so that He'd be okay. And then move forward then to the New Testament and say, "Hey, look, God set in specific instructions for us as well. What happens if we start tweaking those things?" And hopefully, they're, they'll be able to make that connection to, to see the truth uh, again, like the one door or uh, the way, the truth. And the life. Uh, see in uh, John 14 and verse 1, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will take you to myself, that uh, where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you'd known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. So again, this is uh, so narrow-minded of him. Uh, he, he's, uh, the way, the truth, the life. How many other options are there? I mean, there's some that we make up, but they're not going to make it. So, again, just as there was one way in and out of the ark, there is one way into uh, the kingdom of God. And we need to make sure that we are following after that because there is only one body that we can get into, uh, that being the, the body of Christ. Uh, for just as the body is one and has many members, all the members of the body through, through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. And there is one body of Christ that we are all added to. And of course that's, you know, they'll put the little quotation marks around Christianity or, or Christendom or, you know, this, uh, the, the church. Uh, you, you look at, uh, you know, the, even the term, uh, you know, Catholic uh, being, you know, this uh, all-encompassing worldwide body. And... While that is accurate, we have uh, one body for the entire world. We saw that in Daniel chapter 2. We need to make sure it's the right body because there are lots of other bodies that are out there and we need to make sure that we are entering the one way into the one body to make sure that we are pleasing to God. So the ark had a, also uh, had one window and uh, you look at um, uh, pictures of the ark, and uh, well, there's some confusion over one window. Uh, there's uh, you know lots of uh, you know it's like children's <coughs> stories where they they're trying to show uh, you know knowing the ark, and and you have the normally the one door is just pretty pretty easy to cover there. But uh, you talk talking about the the window, and there's uh, you know the whole side of the ark is full of uh, windows because who wants to be on a, a a big wood box or be in a big wood box with 
all those animals and everything that comes with them, all right? And so they get some ventilation there, all right? So they, uh, you know, drop, you know, so well, let's put a bunch of windows in all on the side. Uh, normally they're square. They don't have these nice, uh, you know, round, uh, uh, you know, windows like you're supposed to have on a, on a ship, right? Okay, I guess they have square ones too. But, uh, or uh, they, you know, of course, they, you know, mentions uh, one cubit in there. We'll read the, the verse in just a minute, uh, back in verse 16. Uh, you know, it's a one cubit window. And so you'll have some that, uh, you know, throw it in, in a cubit, again, just kind of, it's not exactly scientific. You're basically going from the bottom of your elbow to the top of your finger. And, uh, you, know, you know, Kathy and I will, you know, we'll compare cubits after service to see. All right, maybe not. But, uh, you know, so it could be varying measurements there. But, so, all right, here you go. You got a cubit. It's about 18 inches is what we're looking at. And so they'll put a little thing in there, you know, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, one, one little cubit window uh, for a uh, massive box full of animals and, and you know, it was eight people. And, and that makes no sense. So obviously uh, the story of Noah and the ark is, is fake. And they get all that from a window. Again, if we read through the verse, let's, let's take a look at it and see what type of uh, one window that he had. Uh, make a, again, Genesis 6 and verse 16, make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side. All right, so again, this idea of roof, uh, you can also look in, into what the, the term means. It, it's kind of like a, a skylight, and he says, finish it to a cubit above. So basically, the, uh, there was one long window. Uh, is make make the roof and uh, leave it uh, you know a, you know a cubit short all you know so there would be uh, light coming in there's uh, you know again hopefully some ventilation and uh, you know so that was a there was one window but it was a, a really long window and so but again uh, when we look at the church there is also one source of light and that being God's word and uh, well that's uh, Easy enough to see in Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That one source of, of light that we have, uh, again, in, in a world full of suggested light sources, there are so many books written uh, that uh, try to explain the Bible. There are so many books written that uh, use this along with the Bible and so many other options, but Again, God is pretty plain in there's one source for our information, one source where, again, we, we go through uh, the woods and uh, it's the middle of the night and we need to see where we're going. We're going to shine a light uh, from our flashlight, from our, our cell phone. Um, Bob uses a kerosene lantern to go through and, and, and check things out. But we need some type of light source so we can see where we're going. God provides a, a light for our pathway so we can see where we're going. And, of course, that being his word. Uh, Psalm 119, 130, the unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. It's not hard to understand. He lays it out there for us so we can know where we're going, how we're getting there, what happens when we get there. Of course, we know those in the ark were saved from destruction. We see in uh, uh, Ephesians 3, uh, we are uh, in this body of, of Christ, uh, which allows us to be saved as well. Uh, Ephesians 3, verse 1, For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. In learning the gospel, learning the, the death, burial, and resurrection of, of Jesus, and being able to then uh, you know, follow the, the pathway that's laid out, which that brings us into the, the body of Christ. Uh, we see in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, and verses 12 and 13, uh, we're, we're baptized into this body. For just as the body is one and has many members, all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. 
or one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. So we were baptized into the, into the one thing that is going to be able to uh, save us uh, from the eternal loss, uh, save us from hell. Uh, just the way, the same way that, uh, uh, of course, Noah and his family and all those animals, they were saved because they were in the ark where God told them to be. And uh, the thing that, uh, because they were where they were supposed to be, the thing that destroyed all life on earth was actually what lifted them up to safety. They were in the ark. They were lifted by the water up above all the destruction and, and death and loss that was below them. And, of course, uh, Peter compares that uh, to baptism. Again, it's just like uh, Noah and his family were saved uh, through, uh, through the water and, and being there, uh, we too, when we are baptized, uh, baptism saves us. Uh, not the uh, uh, not the removal of dirt from the body. And it's not that we go under the water and, and sins on us and we get the uh, holy soap and uh, wash it all off of us and then we, we come out clean. It's uh, doing what God said. Uh, God told Noah, build an ark, get in it. They, they did that and they were saved. The Bible tells us, get under the water, come back out to be saved, to have our sins washed away. We do that, and we're obedient to him again. There's nothing, uh, there's no holy water, there's no uh, holy method, holy checklist to follow. It is, just do what God says to do, and we'll be saved. And here's the thing, again, if we are in the body... We're in the place that God wants us to be. We're going to be saved. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and verse 20. Uh, again, when we look at so when, when time ends and, and this life is over, we see in verse number 28, when all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself uh, will also be subjected to him and put all things, under, uh, sub, all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. Our Savior, the, uh, the head of our body, uh, we see in, in earlier verses that that's where he, he is going to take us to God. So those outside of that body are going to be lost, just like uh, those outside the ark were lost. And so, again, those who have not obeyed the gospel, those who, uh, as Paul describes it in 2 Thessalonians uh, 1, those that uh, don't know uh, the gospel, those that don't know God are going to be lost. So we, we talked about that this morning in, in the Bible class. We mentioned the, you know, the, the Gentiles and the fact that you know, so we don't need to act like them. They, they, don't, even, they don't know God. And, and we know what's going to happen to those that don't know God, he would say in the, in the next letter that he wrote to them. So why would we want to be like them? Well, again, uh, he, he lays it out plain and simple. Those that don't know God, those that don't obey the gospel, again, the, those that might know God, those that know who Jesus is, but still do not obey, they're going to be lost. They're going to suffer the punishment of eternal destruction. We look in Ephesians uh, 1 and verse 3, again, uh, all spiritual blessings are found in Christ. So freedom from sin, relationship with God, salvation, home in heaven. All of these uh, awesomely wonderful things are found inside Christ. So what's out? Everything else that we don't want. And so when the rains came, the floods came, the earth moved, there were a lot of people, I'm sure, who really, really wanted to be inside that ark. And I just, I was just trying to imagine the folks that were there that, that he had been preaching to. He, he preached for 100 years, begging them to come into the ark to be saved. And then, of course, as they entered in, God closed the door. The, the begging to be let in, the banging on the side, who knows what they had to endure before finally it it stopped and they knew what that meant we don't want to be on the outside when it comes to the day of judgment uh, Jesus you know, the way he described it with uh, 
passing judgment and, and people going where they were going to go. There was people that are going to be surprised. There's people that are going to be asking for opportunity to go in. Uh, we, we see the, uh, the parable of the, the foolish virgins. And, and they're that banging on the doors that let, let us in. You know us. I mean, they, they were invited to the, to the wedding and the feast. They weren't allowed in. We need to make sure that we are in the body of Christ where we need to be. So, again, with, with these uh, types and any types, again, uh, Noah's Ark teaches us uh, a lot of truths about the church. Again, hopefully this is a tool that we can use when we talk to others about salvation, the one way, uh, the truth, and the life. Romans 15 to verse 4, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scripture we might have hope. This is, the reason we have these uh, stories is not for our entertainment and not for Hollywood to butcher them and turn them into movies. The reason we have these stories of uh, you know, the children of Israel escaping Egypt and, and feasts that were created and uh, arks that were filled with animals and ate people, the reason we have these things is so we can learn the lessons that God wants us to learn and then hopefully share them with others. We have a commission that we're given to take the gospel to the whole world. This type of story in comparison can help us teach the gospel to others who may be more closed-minded because, oh, I know exactly what you're going to say. Well, what if we talk about something different? And then talk about that. <coughs> Talking with people sometimes is only a step. Taking that step to be able to, to say, hey, let me, let me talk to you about this. Let me ask you a question. Just like being obedient to God, well, it's, it's that, that step. See, he, he's taking care of his part. He developed the plan. He sent Jesus to this earth to die on the cross. He even gave us an instruction manual so that we can know exactly what we need to do. And then says, okay, now it's up to you. Are you willing to take the step toward him? to be able to have forgiveness of sins, to be able to, uh, to be in the body of Christ. Of course, that's uh, it's being taught the gospel. And then once we realize the truth, to be able to make a change in our life, to, to follow after his will, to make that confession that uh, we believe that he is the, the Christ, the son of the living God, to be willing to be baptized, have our sins washed away. And then, of course, taking steps after that to make sure that we remain faithful. Revelation 2.10 we remain faithful even if it's to the point of death then we'll receive a crown of life in heaven. But if you've done that and have uh, allowed sin back in your life, again it's only a step. Uh, God hasn't moved. He is the same place he has been. He's looking for us. He wants us to, to be able to have that sin removed so that he can continue his relationship with us. And then, of course, also be with us in heaven for all eternity. But he leaves that up to us. Are we willing to take that step toward him, asking him for forgiveness and repenting, turning our life back around? As we uh, sing this song, it's an encouragement uh, from us to us, a reminder, take a step. And I promise we will be behind you 100% praying for you, praying with you, encouraging you to continue taking those steps afterward that allows us to maintain that relationship with God. But if there's something that we can do to help you with taking that step this morning, we'd love to do that, even now as we stand and sing. Hear the sweet voice of Jesus say, come unto me.
the types that can be studied there. That's very good. Um, it's always a great blessing to me to be able to assemble with you. And I uh, hope that you have received blessing from me being here with you. I remember all those announcements made earlier, and especially those that we need to continue to remember in our prayers, pray for our leaders, pray for those of our folks that aren't here, uh, and uh, we've got uh, those that are going to be traveling as well. So, uh, and a reminder of the uh, singing at 2 o'clock <laughs> at uh, the Harmony Grove, and I uh, hope that you can be there and participate in that as well. This time, Johnny's going to come and lead us in our closing prayer. Let's, let's pray together. What a great day. What a great day upon the first day of the week that we have to come together as a family. What a joy. And we can encourage one another on our way. And we may encourage others to come to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we find. Our Father in heaven, we thank you again for this day that we have to come together as a family of yours to worship you. Father, there the sacrifice that your son gave for us. Father, we pray for those that will be having surgery this week. Father, we pray for those that are sick and not with us. We pray that you will be with them and give them strength that they can be back with us. Father, we pray that you will help us to be an example to others. In our workplace, wherever we go, that we can be able to ask and encourage others to come to know thee as, it, as you're saying. Father, thank you for the family here. Father, we thank you for our missionaries on foreign soil. We pray that you will be with them as they teach the gospel. Father, help them to never be ashamed to let people know that we are children of yours. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.